Right. Hi, everyone. Um, it's been a couple of years since I've had the pleasure of attending and giving a talk, um, so I'm very happy to be here. Um, <laughs> off the side of my desk, for the most part, I've been trying to pull together a bunch of data um, to present on, or to write a couple papers on vessel strikes and entanglement risk and various things that were the focus of my job for many years, and I can happy, happily say that the vessel strike paper is under review. Um, so we're very close, not peer reviewed just yet, but anyway, so I'm here to present some of the preliminary data um, to you on what we've managed to pull together from eight years of, um, of incident reporting, uh, specifically on vessel strikes. So I only put four slides up in hopes that I can actually attain my five, my five <laughs> minutes and not run over. So I've jam-packed everything onto four slides. Um, so uh, when we pull out the vessel strike data over eight years, 2004 to 2011, uh, there were 76 reports, but, uh, and those covered 10 species, but um, only 32 of those were confirmed to have been vessel strikes. So we were very rigorous in how we were classifying vessel strike and confirming it. And I'll get into a bit of the reasoning for that later. Um, so 30% of those were of carcasses that were determined that their cause of death, death was a vessel strike. Um, and animals that were alive, sorry, that's a ch should say injured, not injured. Um, <laughs> injured animals that were alive, and there was evidence that the injury was fairly fresh and therefore occurred in BC waters. So we eliminated animals that um, may have had a vessel strike occur a year ago, three months ago, because it's very likely that they may not have been in BC waters at the time, and we can't classify that as a BC strike. Um, and we didn't want to double count with other researchers, research happening elsewhere. And then 68% of the data were of witnessed strikes. So these are strikes where people actually were certain that they hit a whale, and there was evidence to support that. The strike locations vary all over the coast, as you can see from that chart. Um, the triangles are the witness strikes, and the dots are the not witness, so for the carcasses or the uh, scarred up animals. 37% of those are off the west coast of Vancouver Island, and that also corresponds to 41% of, of the witness strikes being off west coast Vancouver Island. All except for one carcass or injured live animal was seen around Vancouver Island. And of course, when we look at the data, the only ones we can really say occurred off West Coast Vancouver Island or in any one location are the ones where it was witnessed because a carcass can float and a live animal can swim a great distance before it's seen. So although there may be a dot on a map that do doesn't necessarily mean for the dots, not the triangles, <laughs> that that incident, that vessel strike occurred at that location. So we have to keep, bear that in mind. Um, of the data set, there were seven fatalities, and this is for all marine mammals, let me um, reiterate, not just for whales. And 31% of the data set included animals that had severe or life-threatening injuries, seven of those being fatalities. And you can see at the graph at the top the range over the, the eight years of the data set. What does this mean about vessel details? So we looked very carefully at the information that was provided, now again, Sample size goes down to 22 here, so not that big of a sample size, but we're hoping to continue that in the future and, and start to glean a little bit more from this data. Um, the vessel types and sizes, 86% of those were from vessels that were fairly small in size, so less than 15 meters long. Half of the witnessed reports were from commercial recreational motorized vessels, so that means um, whale watching vessels, that means charter fishing vessels, um, other category I was thinking of. Oh, and other ecotourism vessels and sailboats, which are in that category. And you can see from the chart where that plays out in terms of the different types of vessels that were report that were involved in the reports, as well as the activity um, in the legend there that they were undertaking at the time of the strike. Um, so transiting was 73 represents 73 percent of the data. So that's vessels transiting from one location to another. So even though it may be a whale watching boat that's, um, that may have been involved in a strike or a, a charter boat, they're not striking the animal while they're watching it. They're striking it on the way to or from their, act, their actually destined activity. Um, the range in speeds were very broad, everything from four, five knots up to 43 knots. Um, where we could, we, we tried to get an average or 
the descriptive terms, at least, you know, um, at full speed, uh, we'd, we'd look at the details of that particular vessel and try to uh, figure out what at full speed really means for their size of engine and, and size of vessel and so on. Um, so the average speed that caused any kind of injury was 18 knots, and that's very consistent with um, other literature around the world. Um, the, there were several slow speed collisions, as you can see, the five to nine knot range at the bottom chart there. Those were mainly from sailing vessels that struck animals um, or vessels that had an encounter with a whale that was be, um, exhibiting friendly behavior. So animals that are hanging around the props, swimming around the boat, um, and just happened to get struck. And there were, as you can see, a couple of research or government vessel strikes in there. And so by strike, I don't necessarily mean a very high-powered traumatic strike. It may very well be a nick from a propeller, but it's still an animal having an interaction with a vessel. All right, so what are the impacts to whales? I'm going to whittle this down from all marine mammals to whales now. Um, although I recognize this is a very small sample size over only an eight-year period, but let's throw in a rate of mortality or, or injury of strike just for the sake of it. With the, what this data set re represents is that 1.35 humpbacks per year are being impacted by strikes. Half of a killer whale. <laughs> it's odd numbers, but that's what's pulling out. In future, uh, hopefully, well, hopefully we won't get more of a sample size. We will have reduced strikes. Um, the type of injury that's occurring, there's blunt force versus sharp trauma. So blunt force trauma is an impact of a hull on an animal that doesn't necessarily cause a laceration, but may cause considerable contusions or damage internally, uh, sharp trauma being um, propeller wounds and so on. So when we look at the data set over different species, humpback whales are just slightly more struck or more impacted by blunt force trauma over sharp and killer whales in the reverse direction. The location of um, highest injury um, on the body of an animal um, is the dorsal mid-back area, 41% there. And that's mainly to humpback whales. And kind of makes sense. That's the area of the body that's going to be at the surface of the water for the longest period of time. Or the first portion of the body that's going to be seen at the surface and going to be struck versus a tail that's, you know, the back's already going to be up. So the vessel will have time to see the back before it strikes and hopefully avoid. So that makes some sense. Um, half of the strikes were minor in severity. 73% of humpback whale injuries were minor. Um, <clears throat> now, there's some reasons why different injury types um, and different injury locations, <clears throat> why that may differ for different species. And if you think of their behavior in the water, how acrobatic they are, how fast they are to dive, um, what kind of foraging behaviors they have, how distracted they are by what they're doing, so they may not even notice an oncoming vessel, those types of things explain a lot of this information, of this data. That's the wrong button. Okay. So, I'm close. All right, last slide. Uh, what, what I'm trying to say here is, although we have a small sample size, or there, was a, there was a fair number of strikes that were reported, not everything is known. Um, we had to eliminate a lot of the strike data because we don't have enough information. We need to investigate further. Um, a lot of stuff isn't reported. A lot of strikes, they don't even, vessel operators may not have even known they occurred. There is an overrepresentation, one would assume, of large boats or small boat strikes in here because small boats are going to feel the impact. A large boat may not. Therefore, small boat um, strikes are more likely to be reported. Small boats are going to cause mi more minor injuries than large vessels are, and so that animal may very well live to show its battle scars and be seen. So there, we have to take that with a grain of salt as well. Um, sometimes struck animals aren't recited after the fact, so there's lack of confirmation of injuries that have occurred. Um, animals that are struck in offshore waters may very well sink before they drift to shore, so we don't have them for necropsy purposes. And if an animal is not necropsied, we can't say for certain whether it was struck by a boat or not. A lot of injuries are internal, and they are not seen unless we cut it open and we do a thorough investigation. Um, Back of the envelope calculation here, of all the necropsied animals that were struck, um, or 23% of all necropsied um, whales were struck from this data set, 
And if you calculate that over all stranded whales that we've seen in our data set or of all the incidents, that means that maybe about another nine and a half of those whales may have been struck that we could add to the data set if we were to do a bit of modeling work there. So I think I need more bigger sample size to get there. So that is why we're moving on with additional, um, additional efforts to investigate the risk of vessel strike, and that's the topic of Linda's talk that's up next. We're on one quick question for Lisa. Can you repeat the question? Uh, the question was, were there any commercial vessels that were reported to have struck commercial fishing vessels? There was one in the data set. It was actually an interesting case because there was a, the, ves the vessel had reported striking a whale but hadn't seen it resurface. And a whale was found stranded on the shore within a few days of that. And looking at drift models and so on, um, and knowing the description of the whale that was struck from the vessel, um, there's a very good chance that the animal on shore was the struck animal. Um, so I did, there was a lot of investigation that went into this data set to try and tease out anything that, you know, so we're not double counting things. 